Hey guys, it's Sob Talk Live, show by a couple of sob guys who love their sobs. Four other guys who love their sobs. I'm Lee So. Hi, I'm Mark Romisher, and we're here every Thursday at 8 p.m. Stories about sob owners keeping their cars on the road and working great. Hey, so tonight we're going to start out with uh, taking you under the hood of a sob vegan that uh, is kicking out about six hundred horsepower. So that's kind of a crazy ride. Mark, you actually know the owner of this car and he's done some work for you. So tell us more about him. Absolutely. Shane Mulcahy. He's a technician who works down at uh, what is now known as uh, Superior Performance uh, down in uh, Wendell, North Carolina. And he's been part of this family business for a number of years. And uh, he actually did work for me on various vehicles throughout the time I've known him. It's been a wonderful experience. And uh, he's actually had some projects of his own, and this uh, uh, Saab just happens to be one of them. And uh, it's been a great family business. It's really great knowing these group of guys. Um, you see the family shot there. Um, they work on all kinds of vehicles, and they work on everything from Saabs to you know European to a domestic, uh, what have you. They'll uh, you bring it in, they'll come and fix it up. Well, uh, let's let's bring uh, Shane on board and uh, welcome Shane to Sob Talk Live. Hello. Glad you're here. Thank I'll you for you. having me. You bet. So, uh, did I get that right? About 600 horsepower out of your vegan? Yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mark, you uh, you were able to ride in this car. Uh, I suspect that was a pretty wild ride. It was. <laughs> Shane has a. Uh, secret spot he likes to take uh people for rides in apparently it, uh, <laughs> it's a very very nice little ride indeed goodness gracious uh like he said the uh limited clip differential uh almost did no justice trying to keep the car straight when he slammed on the gas <laughs> <laughs> so the vegan was uh i understand was sob's effort to try and and uh, beat BMW and Audi and, and all of those guys. So the Vigan came with more horsepower from the factory, uh, stiffer suspension and some other improvements. Tell me more about that, Shane. How did this car come from the factory? Yeah, I mean, it was it was just like a souped up 9.3 base model. So it came with the, the 2.3 that came in the 9.5. So it had a little more torque and power. Um, I think it sat a little bit lower than a, a stock, like a base 9.3, bigger wheels. Uh, a nicer interior mm -hmm. uh and then it came with the um the differential and and axle spline size that were a little bit beefier those were like from a nine five instead of a, a smaller set from a nine three you've got this one lowered don't you it looks like that can't be the, the factory stance is it it is, it is lowered <laughs> it looks angry it, lo it looks great it's lowered just enough. It doesn't. It doesn't rub everywhere, and I can drive it like anywhere I want. Well, it sure looks like you did. So, where was this photo? This is in the Badlands in South Dakota. Oh yeah. So this was when you were on your way out to the uh, Saab Owner Club uh, meeting in in Colorado. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that was in 2019. And uh, here is your car on display in the uh, center court there of the hotel, right? It was. I was very fortunate to have my car in there. <laughs> Well, that is pretty cool. Good for you. Well, I want to learn a little bit more about the process that you underwent. And you told me that there are some things that um, if you were going to do this all over again, you do a little differently. And so we'll get to that in just a second. Who's mm -hmm. this guy and what's his role in your car? That's Matty Prince. He owns Cronin Performance. I met him at Carlisle a couple of years ago and we became really good friends. And I had just asked him, I was like, hey, you want to stick a big turbo on uh, my car? And he was like, let's, let's do it. And it just sort of happened. He made a really nice turbo kit. And now he's producing them for 9.5. So it turned so, out pretty well. And you can see how big that thing is, that turbo right there in the uh, uh, mm -hmm. right in the front wearing its little heat jacket. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. Yeah. But, you know, guys, uh, if you've got any questions that you want to uh, put through us, uh, please go ahead and uh, you can enter them um, and we'll get them over to, to uh, Shane to answer and uh, anything's fair game. So just uh, let us know. <laughs> uh, so let's take a look under the hood. Let's look a little more closely here. Uh, what are we looking at? So the setups, nothing 
too fancy, I'd argue. It's it's a built 2.3, so just forged pistons and forged rods, stock displacement, uh, rebuilt transmission with a, a Quaif limited slip diff, and then uh, the turbo kit, which is a custom manifold uh, exhaust, and then a GTX 3071R. So how much how much more boost is this generating than a stock turbo would be? Um, boost is is sort of relative to the volume of air, uh, but this one pulls at, at peak peak power on E85. It, it peaks at about thirty two pounds. Thirty two pounds. Yep. <laughs> wow. And what was stock on these things? I think stocks ran like 18 to 20, maybe 22, if I'm correct. Wow. So, and awesome. did you have to do any mods to the internals to, to get it to stand up to that much pressure? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so forged pistons, because the, the B-series, the 205 and the 235 were known for weak cast pistons, and they would just get hot and the rings would squeeze them and they'd, they'd shatter. Um, so forged pistons, they're absolutely necessary especially going going anything over 300 horsepower and then mm -hmm. um forged rods not entirely necessary but you know i was kind of going all the way with it so why not they're a little bit lighter stronger yeah at that point why not um yeah so hey, there's a question here from chase sonnen uh t7 yeah. or t5 what's uh what's the better way to go it is entirely up to you. There are guys making really big power and the drivability is just fine on T5 cars. Um, the engine management is a little bit simpler. Uh, but the problem is there's less people that know how to tune them and work on those cars because they are older. Uh, whereas T5, uh, T7 is a little bit more intricate. You gotta, you gotta find somebody that knows what they're doing and how to tune one accordingly. And, you suffer, you do suffer with the problem with the T7 engines. You know, they were, they were weaker than T5 stuff. So it's just a matter of preference, availability, cost. So here is a look at what I'm, what am I seeing here? This isn't your engine, right? This is another one. No, that's a, that's a turbo setup. We put on a nine five aero station wagon. Uh, and it's, it's almost identical to mine. Um, that, that one's a different turbo though. If I wanted um, to add more horsepower to just about any Saab, where would you start with that big monster downpipe you've got going there? Yeah, there's a couple companies, Genuine Saab, Krona. Um, they make some really high quality uh, downpipes. Um, removing the exhaust gases and, and reducing heat in the engine bay is a, a critical, critical part of increasing power. You know, I had to have a question myself. We're talking a lot about horsepower and how to make that engine go go a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. Down the drive line, the transmission, what work did you have to put into the transmission to harness all this power? Yeah. So all fobs are known to have, at least the older ones, uh, T5, T7, uh, and then the C900s were known to have fragile transmissions. Mm -hmm. um, now, I did not build my transmission, even though I have the tools to do so. I decided to outsource to a guy, Stephen Boykin. He's in California. He builds a lot of them. And from the information he passed on to me, he said uh, he, they change a lot of the toler. He changes a lot of the tolerances within the transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, that prove he's proven to, to better handle some of the torque that goes through them, so they're less likely to break. Um, and then as well as the limited slip diff, that, that's a big factor. Um, it helps uh, uh, not shock load the transmission quite as often, which is, which is what breaks them. Big torque breaks those transmissions. Gotcha, gotcha. So what's, the, what's it like trying to keep your hands on the wheel with 600 horsepower running through that thing? It's got to be torque steer like crazy. <laughs> it, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes it's not. The, the differential helps significantly um but if if the car finds a groove in the road it's going to follow it whether it's over the double yellow or not and the only option is either keep your foot in it or let off you, you got two choices <laughs> Go fighting is not much of an option gotcha so with this car build that you have shane you you've uh, built the transmission you you've 
built the engine. And then what about other um, add-ons and performance gains, such as suspension and brakes? I noticed that you have some very uh, visual brakes on that car, and obviously those aren't stock. So can you tell us more about the brakes and suspension that you've made improvements on? So with with any increase in power, you're you're changing the acceleration squat, and if you're going to be braking from higher speeds, you're changing the nose dive. So suspension is pretty critical on something like that, um, particularly stiffening it at least a little bit. Um, lowering the center gravity center of gravity is a great option too if you do want to lower it. But I've just got Bilstein's um, with lowering springs, nothing too crazy. I'd, I'd argue it's just enough for that setup, and then of course the brakes. If you're if you're slowing down from speeds that car is capable of, you don't you don't want to not be able to stop. And those are um, the three thirty millimeter floating rotor setup from Abbott. It's a, a four piston AP uh, racing front front caliper setup, and then I've got the nine five uh, three hundred millimeter uh, rears. Oh, nice. How is how reliable is this car, Ben? Do you, is it a daily for you, or is it just out ripping up and down? Uh, I, l- I love this question because of the stigma that is sort of associated with cars that make big power. And I daily this car. I've put 35,000 miles on it since wow. the setup went together. And I've had one issue and I, it was just, I caught a bad tank of, of ethanol and I had to have my injectors rebuilt. But otherwise, I mean, I drove it to Colorado and back. We did 4,200 miles in a week. No problem. Nice. The air conditioning still works. It's been <laughs> a fantastic awesome. car. Oh, well, I envy you the air conditioning. I'll give you that. <laughs> um, so what kind of fuel mileage are you seeing out of this thing when you just, you know, you're not, foot's not deep in it? It's almost it's like a tiny bit worse than a factory car, which is very impressive. Um, it, highway, I get like 28 to the gallon, um, oh. on gas, on gas, uh, E85, it, it makes like 22, yeah. but <clears throat> I normally drive around on gas anyway. How, um, all right, here's the big question. Of course, everybody wants to know, uh, how, how tight have you wound this thing out? What's your top speed so far? Um, so anyone that's driven an OG 93 knows they get a little sketchy above 120. Um, uh, I've had mine up to like 140. That was it. And that was, that was all I wanted to do. Still going though. Still pulling. You, you just backed out of it. Oh, I am. So on the E85 stuff, I swear up and down the car pulls harder from 90 to 120 than it does 60 to 90 in third. It's absurd. Wow. Okay. <laughs> That probably has so, something to do with all the air going through that turbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about Saab more broadly. So your whole family, mm-hmm. you were raised in a Saab family, right? I mean, you guys have been around Saabs forever. Oh, yeah. So my dad, it was I believe his first job was with Saab in Hyannis, Massachusetts on Cape Cod. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was a master tech for 30 years prior to them shutting down. So there was absolutely no way I was getting out of being around Saab. But both my parents drove them, 9.5s, 9,000s, had a couple of 900s, a 9.7, anything and everything. So now you guys have had to actually change the name of the shop, though, I understand, right? I mean, yeah, not in a a bad way. Um, We just get you know, we're, we're in a growing town. Um, Raleigh is expanding outwards and we get a lot of people to call and ask before we changed our name. Um, you know, do we work on, uh, domestic stuff? Do we work on European stuff other than Sobs? And of course the answer is always yes, but we just, we wanted to keep the name change similar to Swedish performance, uh, keep the logos, the colors, the same, just, just make it more general so that the, the public would understand what we do. Yeah, so you kept the yellow and and blue, the traditional mm-hmm. Swedish colors, and yeah, I get that. Um, what is there about Sobs that you think appeals to idiots like us? <laughs> um, so, with the exception of a few people, I feel like a lot of it just just passed down uh, enjoyment. You know, like I got it from being around my parents. Uh, I've talked to Maddie; he said the same thing. Uh, it's all. It, it always seems to come back to to someone in the family shared an enjoyable experience in the Saab. 
Um, and it's hard to like get away from that sentiment, whether, whether, you know, you own one or not, you know, we all sort of gravitate back to them in the end, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. <laughs> I, I, I feel that I, I live that. Yeah. So, you guys have any questions uh, for Shane? Obviously, you can see here that he knows a lot about taking care of these cars. So uh, we can open a little mechanics clinic here if you want to pop a question and we'll, we'll put it past him and see how that goes. You know, you and I talked briefly the other day and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm a classic Saab 900 guy. I don't have a lot of time in the, in the newer gens. Um, what is there about those cars that made them classic? Mm -hmm. And the prices are climbing, and I think there's two or three have come come through Bring a Trailer recently and brought some pretty yeah. good bucks. Well, I think, with the exception of a few things, I think as the generations went on, like Saab just was able to improve on themselves where they sort of lacked in the previous generation. Um, so with the Vegans, I, I just argued they're a little more peppy. Um, they're, I wouldn't say they're more fun. They're more fun in their own way uh, with, you know, the whole unpredictable torque steer and, and the chassis is a little more dynamic um, than the C900. I think that that and probably the the slightly more modern engine management system, the fuel injection, I think that that's sort of what's drawing people's attention to them because they, they could have been a fantastic, like, big tuner car, but, mm -hmm. you know, they slipped under the radar. <laughs> Yeah. The, uh, the prices have been fun to watch and, and it's not only, uh, the, uh, the OGs that are, that are going up that much. I mean, there, I've seen some, some good prices coming through on yeah. the newer generation stuff. Absolutely. I think, I think people are, are really starting to understand that within the next 15, 20 years, we're not going to be able to buy new gasoline powered cars anymore. And that, Saab's gone, and they were certainly a big part of automotive history. So there, there, people are trying to get in now, while the, now while they can. I'd, I'd argue. Mm -hmm. So if I'm going to go back to the whole horsepower question, if you were to try and squeeze some more horsepower out of the car, you said first you do everything you could to uh, get more heat and gases away from the engine. What comes next? Mm -hmm. So. In my car, particularly, or just anyone's just vehicle? General, yeah. If I'm just your average SOM guy, mm -hmm. I, I, I want a little more juice out of this thing. What, what would you suggest? So an engine's just an air pump, and it's a matter of getting air in and out as quickly and, and efficiently as possible, of course, with the addition of fuel to that, because you need fuel and it needs to be appropriate. Um, so most of your standard bolt-ons, like your, your intercooler, your downpipe, um the diverter valve and then a set of injectors <clears throat> you can increase the stock output on a 9.5 or a vegan from from stock which is those bolt-ons to close to 350 horsepower if you're getting a little aggressive with it by you know we're talking 2500 dollars in modifications it's not too bad at all not at all oh, that's, that's a lot of extra go for not much yeah. dough that's pretty nice yeah, yeah. And also, I know that there's the bolt-on uh, addition. What about also the software behind uh, tuning as well? Because I know there is a component there where uh, you have to have programmings for the ECU and so forth. So can you can you kind of give some light on that? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of great options out there right now. Um, at, at our place, we've worked with John Shaguar. I'm sure many people watching know about him. He had a 600 horsepower 9.5 out in Houston. Um, fantastic tuner. You just have to have your in um, because it does require to be able to bench flash the car and you need special equipment to be able to, you know, go back and forth and upload the tune to the computer. Mm -hmm. um, but another option is uh, like MapTune offers called the MapTuner X. It's basically a little tablet that you plug into the OBD port and you can flash the car that way. Um, mm -hmm which is a fantastic bang for your buck. We use them for all our new, like the 9.3 Sport stuff, because um, it's consistent, reliable every single time. Mm -hmm. So we talked a lot about adding power, but you told me you kind of made a mistake and you don't encourage people to go as crazy as you have. How? Tell me more about that. So 
I mean, you know, when you're, when you're young and you, you get your first car that you can make fast, you sort of get bit by the power bug. And um, we turned my car all the way up to 10 as, as, as far as we could get the setup to go. And it would just like rip the tires free at 80 miles an hour. And it wasn't fun. You couldn't use it. Um, so my advice to people particularly with the vegans is if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it i'd certainly argue bolt-ons and a limited slip diff that's where the money is that's where these cars thrive okay so i'm not very smart tell me how do i make a limited slip diff out of am i replacing uh the components in the back end of the transmission there yeah yeah the the differential because Saab is a transaxle the gearbox is is the uh the gear set and the differential all in one um, with the ring gear. So the transmission needs to be opened and rebuilt at that point, which it's on par price point and uh, sourcing parts is it is just as much money as it is to build the engine. Gotcha. gotcha. So, and that's, so that's what this Christos was talking about, right? Is it Quaif? Is that the name of that company? Yeah, yeah, Chris, I I know Christos. He's he's another big turbo Saab guy. Uh, he is abso- he's absolutely on the money. Uh, so wh- how much am I talking about here? So I believe the diff itself runs about twelve hundred bucks. Um, most most of the guys that rebuild the transmissions will charge you about five hundred in labor. It's more so a matter at this point of getting. Uh, parts for the transmissions they're not available um so you either have to find good used parts or you know new old stock stuff that somebody just happens to have sitting on the shelf well so that's the power of the groups right i mean that's what that's all about yeah absolutely cool um mark you got anything else you wanted to cover oh we've we've gone through the gamut um the only (laughs) other thing i can think of is uh, with all the performance modifications, have you actually uh, done anything to the interior, any of the comforts of the vehicle that you've touched on at all? Um, with something like this, it's sort of a trade-off. Uh, you lose comfort with that reliability, or mm-hmm. you lose comfort with that performance. Um, you know, the car rides stiffer. It is a little louder. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would, you know, it's, it's not someone's ideal vehicle to take on a 600-mile road trip. But I deal with it just fine. It's not bad. But the only the only other modifications I've really done is I did the uh, carbon uh, mirror caps and then the interior door handles. And uh, I got all the carbon that that I'm That's what you're going handle. for. Is that right? Just squeeze yeah. every ounce. Is that is that it? Yeah, <laughs> I got a, I got a good thirty grams saved on those those parts. So what kind of if if I if I uh, want to uh, give my sob a little more muscle. Uh, are you taking projects on what, w- how do you work with well, people and, and kind of what, yeah. what's out there? Um, so if, so this past year we've, uh, we've done all, I think three engine builds, um, with forged pistons and, and done upgrades to them that were comparable. Um, so if you, if you ever need anything, um, I'd just suggest contacting our service advisor, um, Jason. He's the guy, he's the main guy you talk to. Uh, he's a pleasure to deal with. And he's just, just, uh, he'll answer through our, our shop number. Cool. And, uh, what's your web, what's your web address? I believe it's superiorperformance.com. I could be incorrect. We've been, we've been having troubles with the whole internet thing because someone else is also named superior performance out West. So did I understand, to get a, a did I understand that, that you guys manage the uh, one of the Facebook groups? Is that right? Did you found the Facebook group? Yeah, Dad did one. Uh, one of the I think it was one of the Sob Parts groups, if I'm correct, Mark. I'm pretty sure you're part of it. Yeah, I thought it was the uh, Sob Technical Help pages. Was the, that was, was it? The group I'm familiar with Technical Help. Yes, you are absolutely <laughs> correct. Dad's so, pretty busy, but. If anyone ever posts a question, he's always trying to get on there and, and get some type of response or suggestion for their problem. Mm-hmm. Well, that's cool. That's uh, that's so important. You know, that's one of the things that I tell people all the time. Um, you, the, the community around these cars is so helpful. It seems like everybody wants to to do their part and share knowledge. And I think 
people really care about keeping these cars on the road. Absolutely. I would certainly agree. I think um, the community plays a, a really big part in, in others that may not be within the community, keeping the cars on the road and like adding to the community every year is a good thing because every year there's less and less Hobbs on the road. So let me put you on the spot here. What is the best Saab? What model is the best in your mind? Oh, Mark and I had Mark and I had discussed this one time, um, <laughs> and I, I told him I would make some people mad. Of course, I'm going to say the OG93 is my favorite, but otherwise, if I were to pick another, I'd go Classic 900. It's hard to beat it. It's the last true Saab. Yeah, can't baby. not have fun in one of those. Yeah, baby. It's slow fun. It's nothing like yours. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun to drive one of those old cars. Hey, we're going to oh, yeah. uh, wrap this thing up. We've been at it about half an hour. That's kind of where I want to keep this. So Shane, oh. thanks for sharing, man. I really enjoyed meeting you and learning more about your car. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. It's been fun. Super. Yeah, it's been good times. Yeah. So uh, guys, uh, Shane's ready to help if you want to reach out and um, need a little help with your sob. So uh, <clears throat> next Thursday uh, at eight o'clock, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Dr. Kelly Kanadi. Uh, Kelly is a, uh, actually he's a retired physician who is really, really good at um, doing all kinds of things with interior modifications and repair. So he's going to show you how you can repair uh, a ripped seam in your seats Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so, you know, I, I don't know if his experience as a physician helps him in, you know, suturing up the seat, but that's what he's going to show you how to do. And it looks like it's pretty simple. It's needle and thread, but he also does a lot of other stuff on the interior of the car, leather care and other things. So we'll talk with, uh, Dr. Kanati next Thursday evening at eight o'clock, maybe seeing some of his stuff in nines magazine. So we'll check out what Kelly's got going on and see what kind of help he can give. You've got questions about your interior. And that's and what that's, we've got for you next week, Mark. Yeah, that's next Thursday on Sob Talk Live. If there's someone you think that we should have on the show and talk about more Sob stuff, please leave a message on Facebook, leave a message on YouTube. Let's go ahead and get the message out because we want to have more Sob guys here on the channel. You bet. All right, guys. Hey, we'll see you next week. Share this around and uh, let's uh, get some more people into the Sob community. We'll see you next week.